Welcome back to the third session in our Mock Anatomy test series on YouTube. Today I've got another 10 questions lined up for you. I'm going to go through each one of them with the answers, as well as giving you a little bit of the surrounding anatomy, some context to the anatomy that we asked to label. As always, if you need to pause the video for more time to look at the image and label the structure first, by all means, pause the video and continue. I'm going to be giving the answers after each and every question. So let's start off with a relatively simple one. I hope most of you will be getting this, and this is the corpus callosum, more specifically the body of the corpus callosum. So if we're looking at this image, we've got a coronal slice, a T1 weighted MRI here, and we can see our lateral ventricles here, as well as just faintly you can see the interventricular foramen that connects the lateral ventricles to the third ventricle. Another name for that is the foramen of Monroe. So we know that we're in the central region of this coronal slice, and we can assume that where we're cutting this corpus callosum is in fact the body of the corpus callosum. So if you want to be specific, you can say the body of the corpus callosum. Question two, we're asked to name this structure. Now for me, this is a question that's gonna come up quite often because it's quite distinct anatomy, and it's a really useful landmark when you're approaching a CT abdomen and you can find your bearings here quite easily if you look for this structure. And this is the left renal vein. Now the left renal vein actually crosses the midline here and it goes in front of this vessel. Now this vessel is on the slightly on the left hand side of the body and this vessel is in fact the abdominal aorta. Now there is a normal anatomical variant where the left renal vein can go a retro aortic left renal vein and that can have its own complications. But normally this should be coming anterior to the aorta and in front of that, this vessel here is a superior mesenteric artery that's coming over that left renal vein. And uh, you may have heard of it before, but if that superior uh, mesenteric artery impinges that left renal vein, you get what's called nutcracker syndrome. And that's a whole nother topic for another video. But this is a great vessel to know where it is in the abdomen, to recognize it. It crosses the midline, joining the um, inferior vena cava. So that's the left renal vein. Let's go on to question three asked to label this structure. So this is in fact the basilar artery. Now the basilar artery, it runs anterior to the midbrain. Some people find that hard to picture it coming from the vertebral arteries, which seem quite posterior and manage to be anterior to the midbrain, but there it is anyway. And it comes posterior, or runs up the surface of the clivus, which is here. Um, and then it's gonna come up into our prepontine cistern and head, head its way up before bifurcating into our posterior cerebral arteries. Question four. Here we've got a um, axial CT of the thorax. We're asked to label this structure. And this is in fact the esophagus. If you want to be more specific here, it's the distal esophagus because we can see we've got a bit of, we're cutting the diaphragm here. We've got a little bit of liver showing in the soft tissue window. So we know that we're at the end of the esophagus, we're just before our OG junction. And again, we can see our descending thoracic aorta there, just slightly on the left-hand side of that vertebral body. Question five, midway through, we asked to label this structure. Now, in hindsight, this is maybe not, these arrows aren't uh, perfect, but I've included this. This is what's called the trochlea, or, and we know it's on the right-hand side here, so it's the right trochlea. This is a question that came up in my part ones, and I remember sitting there trying to rack my brain for what this was called. And the, the trochlea comes up multiple times in the body. You've got your trochlear nerve, you've got your, the trochlea in the knee. And here, what we get is a trochlea groove in which the olecranon here of the ulna um, slides along that groove. And so this joint here is a humeral ulna joint, and this uh, section here of the humerus is called the trochlea, and there's the trochlea um, groove. Going on to question six, asked to label the structure. So we've got a lateral chest radiograph here, and this is the inferior vena cava. And I, it, I've included this here because that's something when you're first looking at x-rays, the very subtle soft tissues are often difficult to appreciate. And so this is a line that you may miss or you may call something. You may say that this is um, some consolidation or something because this portion of lung is not the same density as this portion. But this is actually, in fact, the posterior border of this inferior vena cava, which is going up into the right atrium. Question seven, asked to label this structure. So we're looking here at the left shoulder, and this is, in fact, the left coracoid process. Now, there's the conoid process, coracoid process, 
it's very it's a very easy word for me to get molded up with other other pieces of anatomy. So this is part of the scapula. Now also people seem to confuse the acromion and the coracoid process. Now the coracoid does not form part of a joint. The acromion is a acromioclavicular joint. We know it's lateral. Um, it's the, the bone that can be seen on very skinny people on the posterior portion of the shoulder. This coracoid process is actually an attachment for muscle groups. So we've got our, our short head of our bicep brachii uh, when our long head comes round the humerus here and goes over the top and inserts into the glenoid capsule of the short head goes onto the coracoid and the other muscles are a lot easier to remember is the coracobrachialis, coracobrachialis um, muscle coming down. And then our pec, our pec minor muscle also attaches onto this uh, medial surface of the coracoid process with our pec major coming over the top of those and um, inserting laterally onto the, onto the humerus here. Okay, question eight, we're going through this at a rapid pace. This is an image you may not have been familiar with. Uh, it's an M MRCP, so magne Magnetic Resonance Cholangiopancreatography. Um, so basically we are viewing the biliary tree and uh, the pancreatic um, duct, which is what this is. This is the pancreatic duct. Let's have a quick look at this biliary tree. So we've got um, our hepatic ducts, our left and right hepatic duct, forming the common hepatic duct. We have our gallbladder here, which will give off our cystic duct. And that will join to the common hepatic duct to give us our common bile duct and our pancreatic duct. This can be a single duct. There's sometimes an accessory duct that you notice there. Those go and then insert into the duodenum in our ampulla ovata. Nice imaging, I think, anyway, personally. So here we have another axial CT of the abdomen. Look, we asked to label this structure here. So this is a muscle. This is a um, left quadratus lumborum muscle. So we have anterior to that, we have our left psoas here. Posterior, uh, outside of the abdomen, this is um, our erector spiny muscle groups. And here, this is uh, our quadratus lumborum. This is a, against the posterior abdominal wall, it's um, retroperitoneal. And these muscles are... Um, these are the three main muscle groups that you kind of asked to label in the abdominal cavity, at least in, um, in your exams. Other muscles that they, they could include are, are your internal external obliques and your transverse abdominis, as well as your uh, 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 rectus abdominis. But these posterior muscles, the psoas, the quadratus lumborum, and the erector spinae are quite common questions that come up in the exam. Let's go to our final question. We asked to name this normal anatomical variant. I'll give you a moment to have a look at these images. And so this image is taken at five minutes, and this is a right duplex collecting uh, system in the kidney. So you may be wondering, or you may have looked at this and thought maybe it's a single kidney. What we can see is we can see some contrast filling into the left kidney, and I can actually see the outline of that left kidney. But what if you if you look down here, you notice there's actually a what looks like a kidney stone. And so there's probably some hydronephrosis and some um, renal impairment there that's got that delayed contrast filling of that kidney. And actually from this imaging that I've pulled it from, this was also a duplex collecting system on the left. So this is a right duplex kidney when you've got your pelvic caliceal collecting systems draining a single kidney into a single ureter. This is a normal anatomical variant and is what's known as a right duplex kidney. So that's all I have for today. Ten questions. I hope you've learned something. Uh, these questions, I'm trying to choose questions that come up commonly in the exam, high yield questions that you can really get bang for your buck. The next session I'm planning is going to be all about neuroanatomy. We're going to go through ten neuroanatomy questions. Um, that'll be popping up on the screen now if, um, if that video is out already. If it's not, there'll be another video there for you to go and click along. Um, let me know if you've been enjoying these videos. Please like the video if you, if you are enjoying them so more people can see these videos. I hope your studying is going well and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye everybody.